Hmm. I need something tougher than card. Hang on. Hello everyone, it's Jim Lynn here. Welcome to episode 28 of Mr Lynn's Workshop. David Charlesworth taught a simple way of creating a curved edge on our plane blades using nothing more than a simple strip of card on our sharpening stones. Of course his technique was very successful and thousands use it, but even he wasn't that happy with the durability of the card and I know he tries several different materials. Now I've come up with an adaptation to his technique which completely removes the durability issue. Have a look at this. I found this on Workshop Heaven's site. Now I can't remember why I looked at this item, but scanning through the description, this sentence caught my eye. It says for skewed or cambered blades, a suitable spacer can be placed between one of the steel pins and the blade, giving accurate, controllable, repeatable Results. Aha. Uh -huh. A spacer in the honing guide. So here's my idea. Instead of raising one corner of the blade using a card spacer on the stone, what if I put the spacer under one side of the blade when it's in the honing guide? Will that tip the blade in such a way that only one corner touches the stone? So what should I use as a spacer? Well, card might be okay, but I suspect it might just get crushed in the clamp, so probably metal would be ideal. Well, what about a small ruler then? Well, that'll work, but what if I want to vary the thickness? So, what I need is an accurate metal spacer in various thicknesses. Well, what about spark plug feeler gauges? So, to begin our experiment, we'll start with what we already know works. Now, we know the thickness of the card, that's 025 millimeters. So I found a feeler gauge of 0.25 millimeters. Now we need a maximum, so I've got 0.88, and then something in the middle, so 0.6 will do. Next, we'll need some blades to practice on. So I think we'll use one blade for each gauge, so I've got two number five and a half blades for the 0.88 and 0.6 gauges, and a number four for the 0.25. Right, let's try it out. The tools we need is basically our usual sharpening equipment. In my case I've got my die chem mat with some paper towels and a couple of sponges. I've got my 1000 grit water stone, the Veritas honing guide with the angle registration jig, my larger mag switch, obviously a blade and a feeler gauge, and some methylated spirits and a sharpie. So let's look at the honing guide set up first. Now I've got the straight roller base with the micro bevel knob in the 12 o'clock position. Now in a recent change to my procedures, I'm now using the red number one position on the clamp section. This gives me more room to get my fingers onto the blade. And of course as a consequence of that, I have to use the red number one scale on the angle registration jig. Now I still need a sharpening angle of 33 degrees, and so conveniently, I can use the yellow 25 degrees detent to achieve that 33 degrees. So you can see how much more finger space that gives me. In addition, I can also get all the mag switch onto the blade, but more on that later. I'm going to do the first experiment with the larger blade and the thickest feeler gauge. This one's 0.88 millimetres. Now this will give us deliberately coarse results, but those results will be easier to interpret. The first thing to do is to set up the blade in the guide as normal. Now it's a 2 and 3 eighths inch blade and the guide scale is in 2 eighths increments. So we'll slide on the jig until the mark is halfway between the 2 eighths and the 4 eighths marks. Now this aligns the edge of the blade with the same position on the guide. Tighten up the jig. Insert the blade and tighten the clamp. Now this procedure centralises the blade in the guide and the jig squares the blade and sets the angle. So now I can remove the jig. The next thing to do is to clamp on the mag switch. Now you can see here that I've smoothed the flat faces and I hold it tight against the guide here and switch on the magnets. 
Now it'll become obvious why I need the mag switch shortly, but essentially it means I can now move the blade around, but always be able to get back to a square central position. Now I can insert the feeler gauge. So to do that, I slacken the clamp a bit on the off side, but enough on this side so that we can slide in the gauge. Ensure the blade is still aligned using the mag switch and the marks and tighten the clamp. I'm aligning the gauge with the edge of the blade and the mag switch keeps the tip well clear of the bevel. Now we can remove the mag switch. Here's what we've achieved so far. So the blade is now held at an angle to the reference surface of the clamp. Now it looks a bit extreme, but remember that's deliberate for the time being, whilst we attempt to prove the concept. And setting the whole assembly on a flat surface clearly shows that we've rigged the blade so that it'll be touching the stone on only one corner, and that's what we want. Using other feeler gauges, I found that the gap at the corner was about 15-20% to less than the feeler gauge in the guide. Now we need to see our results clearly, so to help with that, I'm going to mark up the blade. So after cleaning with meths, I colour the bevel with a black marker pen. Once that's dry, I'll make some reference marks. Now, the blade is 60mm wide, so in keeping with David's method of quarters, I'll make marks at 15 millimetres, halfway, and finally at 45 millimetres. Then I extend the marks to the cutting edge where I need them. Okay, time to see if this new technique actually works. So I've got my freshly flattened 1000 grit water stone here and I've immersed it for a few minutes so we're all set. Now I'm going to try not to put pressure on either corner for fear of tipping the blade so I'm going to concentrate on keeping the straight roller fully engaged. Okay, moment of truth. Now I haven't actually tried this yet. This is the first time this has been done. So I'm going to take one swipe and then have a look. Oh, that's good. There's a neat little triangular flat. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Seems to extend about five millimeters into the blade. We need to go 15, so let's take four more and see what happens. It's looking promising, but not quite at 15 millimetres, so one more. Maybe another. It's very close, just one more. Oh, it looks like one too many. No matter, it's an experiment, but I'll stop there and we'll do the other corner. This is where the mag switch comes in. I need it to preserve the blade projection because the angle registration jig only works on one side. I've set it tight against the guide and turned it on. Now I can loosen the clamp. Move the feeler gauge to the other edge. Whilst keeping the blade centred and the mag switch tight against the guide, I can make sure the clamp is tight. Now I can remove the mag switch and we're ready to work on the other corner. Lately, when I'm using marker pen on blades, I tend to keep the stone free of surface water I find that if there's too much as you work and as a slurry builds, it rubs off the marker pen in other areas. And I think this can obscure the results sometimes. I think that was partly what happened on that eighth stroke the last time, but I think an eighth stroke was one too many anyway. So this time, let's try to creep up on it. So we'll do one at a time and check the result after each one.
After seven strokes, I'm just beyond the 15mm mark, so I think a short light stroke will match the other side. Well that's the outer corner points done, and I'm happy with it so far. I mean it's not perfect, but it certainly took a lot less strokes to get here compared to the paper shim method. I remember David recommending starting with five light strokes and then 25 heavy strokes. Well we've barely used eight. Now we need to move on to the intermediate positions. So that's this position here and also here. And we're trying to create a shallower flat spanning these points. And we'll try to do nothing in this central area at the moment. My idea for this is to swap out the first feeler gauge for one half as thick. So using the mag switch again, I took out this 0.88 millimeter gauge and put in this 0.431. There isn't a 0.44, but it's close enough. I'm going to black out the edge again so that we can see what's going on and then I'll try one stroke and have a look. Well that's not quite what I was expecting. The flat seems to go right to the corner, but it has also extended towards the centre too, so let's persevere with another stroke. A bit difficult to tell, I think it has extended further towards the centre, so let's do one more. After three strokes, the right hand tip of the flat is now about halfway from intermediate to centre, so that's okay, that's what we want. But the other tip goes right to the corner, which might be okay, and we'll have to see. Anyway, I'm going to stop there for the moment and do the other corner. Ah, that's more of what I was hoping for, the flat straddling the intermediate mark equally. Let's do another. Well, three strokes was probably one stroke too many again, but this is what I want, a flat equally straddling the intermediate mark. Now let's call that done and I can take the feeler gauge out now. I think one stroke is all it needs and that's just to connect those two intermediate flats. Well, this is our result so far. The corner on the left is actually the more correct one with the intermediate flat stopping short of the edge. The other corner didn't look as though it was as successful, but it may be just the marker rubbed off or perhaps a lent on it a little without knowing it. It's interesting to check how successful or otherwise the mag switch has been. So putting the angle registration jig back on shows everything still square and correct projection. So yes, I'd say quite satisfying really. We're finished with the feeler gauges now, but we're not finished with the process yet. First we'll need to change from the straight roller to the barrel roller. Now we can use the mag switch now or wait till later and then we can use the angle registration jig. Either way you need to set centre, square and projection to closely match what we've just been using. Before we move on to the blending stage, let's clean off the ink and have a closer look at that edge. Well that looks better now that the ink's gone and it's quite a neat curved secondary bevel, at least it's a good start. Now that part that's further up the primary bevel, it should look more pronounced than the actual edge. So it's not perfect but we're doing quite well so far. So far we've had the blade set for a 33 degree secondary bevel. But now we need to do the blending process at 34 to 35 degrees. This will give us a polished micro bevel. In fact, this will be our cutting edge. I've set this micro bevel using the micro bevel knob. When I talk about blending, I mean blending all our little flats from the feeler gauge process. It's the same process as final honing if you know if you were just sharpening. But in this case, I'm just going to spend a little bit longer on it to make sure I've smoothed out all those little facets. This is a freshly flattened 10,000 grit water stone. And again, I don't like it too wet. As you can see here, I'm beginning by pulling in a straight line with pressure on our five points in turn. I'm applying the pressure with my middle fingers. 
And although I'm using the word pressure, it really is very light, just enough to register. I mean, we're polishing here, we're not grinding. Once I'm happy that I've done enough on each of the individual five pressure points, I'll start varying the pressure from one side to the other and then back again. This is the blending action. And again, it's very light pressure and I've got my middle fingers, one on each outside edge and just vary the pressure between them. If you do it correctly, you should see a dark X pattern appear. It's quite difficult to film, but you can just make out a thin line of polish right at the edge. After doing David Charlesworth's ruler trick on the back, we've now got two polished edges, and that means we're done. Using a backlight and a straight edge, we can see a pretty decent curved edge. So I'd say that, in principle, Mr Lin's feeler gauge trick actually works. Of course, the question is, does it do its job in the plane? That's the important thing. So I've got it mounted back in my number five and a half, and here I'm using a shim to check the centering of the blade. The blade is only just protruding. Now, one of the many uses for a curved blade is to square off the edge of a board. So let's try that. We should be able to steer the cut area from one side of the board to the other. Well that definitely seems to be doing the job and it takes full width clean up shavings too. Continuing with the experiment, I tried a 0.6mm feeler gauge on the corners followed by a 0.3 for the intermediate points and that was on my second 5.5 blade. Counterintuitively, I found it easier to see the results if I didn't black the edge. Now, it doesn't show up too well on camera, but under a craft magnifying light, the little triangular flats show up really well. As you can see here, the curve is really subtle, but it is there, as this backlit straight edge test shows. Of course, testing in the plane is the gold standard, and so here I'm doing the side-to-side -side test again. And I'm quite satisfied with the result here, especially with the full width shavings. Finally, I've got my number four blade to do, and this time I dispense with marking the edge altogether, just making marks at the intermediates and centre. Also, I tried going quite extreme with the feeler gauge thickness, going right down to 0.25mm, but after working it, the flat from the 0.25 was quite long after only a couple of strokes, reaching right to the centre, so there seemed no point using the 0.13, which is shown in the picture. I did try filming the finished edge, but it just didn't show up properly. However, the backlit straight edge test shows that the curve is definitely there. No matter, the proof is in the planing, and this clip shows the blade installed in the number 4. The effect of the curved edge is clear, even though it's extremely subtle. And again, satisfying full width shavings.
Well, Mr. Lin's feeler gauge trick works and works very well. Certainly the metal feeler gauges are more durable than the card and the whole process feels a bit more consistent and a bit more reliable. However, setting those gauges in the guide can be a bit fiddly, so practice as much as you need before putting blade to stone. And of course experiment with the process as much as you like, and if you do, please let me know in the comments. Well that's it from me everyone, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Mr Lin's Workshop.